Thanks for joining us. Today we'll be talking with Sam Kephart about economic uncertainty. We'll have a motivational moment with Mr. Attitude, Obamacare money, how is it being spent in South Dakota, and we'll have a preview of Grand Magic and much more. Stay tuned. We're at very best living in significantly uncertain economic times, and many of us believe that uh, all of that's a product of bad politics. Sam Kephart, can you tell me what you see from a street level? We've already talked about uh, uh, the terrible policies, what might have uh, been the cause of us getting where we are. Let's talk about where we are and where we're likely to go. How does it relate to the guy on the street? Well, I think there's, there's several issues. Number one, um, in the real estate market, we still have a very um, cluttered and disorderly real estate market, which of course home ownership is one of the core linchpins, if you will, of American middle class life. Um, more people are renting now, and I, th I think that's a bad trend. But here's an interesting statistic. In the first quarter of 2012, that's this current year, 26% of all residential transactions were foreclosures. That's over a fourth. Selling out of foreclosure, correct. In other words, where the home was foreclosed on and then resold by the banker. Not whoever. where homeowners wanted to sell, but where they were forced into right. a position. They had no other choice. One out of four. More than one out of four. Yes. I think that is a huge bellwether. And when I say bellwether, we talk about, you know, in the old days when they had uh, miners, they would take canaries in cages down in the mine. And if the canary fell over, feet up to the sky, so to speak, the miners knew there was gas in there because the canary's body was more sensitive to the yeah. gas to poison them. Well, there are canaries in the mine here. We see the foreclosure rate. We see the fact that the banks are taking the uh, utility money, if you will, that we deposit, and instead of loaning it back on Main Street, they choke off the credit there, and they put the money into the offshore casino of the derivatives in Wells Fargo. And actually, the, the four major banks in the United States now have more derivatives than they did four or five years ago when this whole thing started. There's now 20% more. It's approaching a quadrillion, a quadrillion and, and derivatives, derivatives. are nothing more than a sophisticated means by which bankers gamble with your money. Correct, instead of loaning. So instead of yeah. making a couple point spread, you know, you deposit money, they pay you two or three percent, they loan it to me for four or five. That's utility banking and that's what a community banking and business banking is supposed to be about. Now they, they, they glean the money from the deposits, but because the executives are paid big bonuses, they go and gin up these offshore deals and they start manipulating. And of course, nobody can value these things because pretty much there's no stock market. So there's, there's no transparency to most of these derivative transactions. So they, get, they book these huge profits. And then like in the case of um, JP Morgan Chase, just in the last two weeks, well, it's a $2 billion loss. Well, now maybe it's a five or $7 billion loss. Yeah. Well, that's depositor money. That's seven, two, three, five, seven, pick a number that is not going that's, into that's the small right. business people. Well, it's fair to say, isn't it, that in this case, the canary has stopped singing. Well, the canary's heaved over. His feet up. Right. But see, our economy has so much momentum to it that it's kind of like a big uh, oil tanker at sea. You can kill the motor, and it's going to go through the water for quite some time. Let me time. ask you what you see on the street in South Dakota, how, how does this play out over the next year or two for average small businesses and family owned farms and ranches? What do you believe is happening to them right now and what do they have to look forward to in the next 24 months? I think the average middle class family in South Dakota is maintaining with difficulty is what I would say. And that's the bad news. The good news is I think we are far better off here, Gordon, actually than some other states. And I think I'm predicting at some point it's going to be so god awful, the economic, social and political like riots and things like that, that we're going to have a bounce back of some of the young folks who have left over the years will come home to be safe. And as a state, we are ill prepared for that. I have asked 
uh, prior Governor Rounds, current Governor Dugard, and other people separately, do we have a plan B if something like another Great Depression or something really bad happens? If the government's check to us bounces, what do we do? Right, and the answer is no, that won't happen. And I was told that separately, words to that effect by both uh, then Governor Rounds and now Governor Dugard in unrelated meetings. And I'm not making them bad guys for that, but folks, if there's a chance that we, if, if there's a one in a hundred, much less a 20 or 30 percent chance that we could experience uh, a 1920s type event, why wouldn't we as a state and as Rapid City and as communities have a contingency plan where you bring we're, some bright people in and talk about what you would do? Sam, we're not even talking about, most people don't know, South Dakota has a six and a half billion dollar debt. Yeah, that's not being published no. very easily, is Amazing. it? Amazing. Uh, we the stage is set for a catastrophic financial um, situation in South Dakota. Even though we may not be scheduled to be the next one hung, that doesn't make our lot in life that much better, does it? No, and even with, uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, state and government employees in South Dakota, and we have the um, South Dakota Retirement Fund. They claim they're 96% funded. I'm not so convinced, and I think on the ones that double dip, we're definitely not properly accounting for their second retirement. Well, speaking of retirement, uh, folks, you probably should be busy retiring every debt you can retire. Right. We believe that it is a time for fiscal responsibility, not just at the government level, but by necessity at a family level. These family-owned businesses really have to tighten their belts and prepare to batten down the hatches.